This entitled mum pretends she's good friends with the owner to get free food for her bratty kid. But this employee is not going to let the woman get away with it anymore. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the show. I am female 19, my parents' second child. I have three brothers, 21, 13, and 7, and a sister 16. We grew up poor, and our parents were often dependent on financial help from relatives, friends, etc. for raising us. This is because even though my dad has a mediocre job, and my mum doesn't work, they just kept on popping out one kid after another. My parents are very religious and believe that children are a gift from God. Personally, I think that is total BS. My parents' reproductive choices wouldn't bother me if it hadn't caused mine and my siblings' lives to turn to crap. While growing up, we never had new clothes or toys. We had to accept handouts from family members who were better off. We never went out or did anything fun. To top it off, we were well aware that the rest of the family looked down on us for constantly asking for handouts. Now, my older brother and I have managed to get into good colleges and are looking forward to a future that would be better than our parents' lives. He and I were staying in our parents' place for a while due to the lockdown. One morning, my parents called all five of us into the living room. Mum said she had great news. The smile that was forming on my face died a quick death when she said, We're pregnant! I lost my temper. I asked them how could they be so stupid and irresponsible? Do they not have enough financial troubles already? That they're trying to bring another mouth to feed? My brother tried to calm me down, but I was livid. After a lifetime of scarcity because of my parents' stupidity, they still hadn't learned their lesson. I asked them how they planned to provide for the kid. My dad told me I would have to give up the money our great uncle had left me. He had left all five of us some money, which only we could access when we turned 18. I said, heck no. That money would help me pay for my college expenses. He called me selfish for not being there for family. My mum started crying and calling me a heartless monster. Dad told me he was disgusted with me. I told them there was no way I was going to pay for their stupidity. What I was really worried about was my siblings' lives getting even worse. My older brother and I have escaped our parents' clutches, but the others, especially my younger sister, will be expected to take care of this baby. No teenager deserves to have their adolescence ruined by diapers and a screaming baby. I know what it's like, as I had to go through that. It was expected of me to be an unpaid nanny to my younger brothers and sister. My older brother could go without his friends and have fun, but I had to stay home and help give baths and feed the toddlers. I decided to get some family members involved so they could talk some sense into my parents. I called my mum's maternal cousin. She's one of my favourite people. When I told her that my mum and dad are having another kid, she reacted with, What? Again? I told her everything and how they expected me to hand over my inheritance. She said she was going to speak to my parents and told me not to sign over anything. I promised her I wouldn't. Of course I won't. I also called two of my first cousins, one of whom is an accountant, so she could explain to my parents how much of a financial liability this baby is going to be. I moved out of my parents' home a few days ago. I was only going to stay there till the lockdown was relaxed, but I just can't bear to listen to my mom's nagging about how this baby is a blessing. I've moved into a friend's basement for a minimal rent. My mum's cousin paid them a visit about a week ago and tried to tell them they weren't doing this child any favours by bringing it into a life of poverty. My mum was very rude to my aunt and told her that a woman who chose to remain barren will never understand a mother's love. My aunt never wanted kids nor had any, one of the reasons she's my favourite. My dad told her to get out. Aunt told me there was nothing she could do, but she did try. I didn't blame her. The cousin tried to explain the economic impact this kid would have, and my mum cried about how everyone was trying to take away her baby. The intervention didn't do crap, so now I've decided to cut contact with my parents. I just can't watch my family slide further and further into a heck hole. I'll be maintaining contact with my sister, 16, just to make sure my parents can't brainwash her. My older brother is going to stay in touch with them all, which is a good thing, as he can act as a link between me and the other siblings if my parents ever forbid them from talking to me. Otherwise, I'm done with these people. It sounds like it was pretty unwise of this mother and father to have another child, but at the same thing, I don't think there was anything morally wrong with it. Then you would have to argue that nobody in a poor country could have a child because they would grow up in poverty. But where they definitely stepped over the line was expecting that they have some sort of claim to their children's inheritance. 
the claim that it's being selfish when they were trying to put it towards their college expenses. That college education is helping the family. If they stayed in good relationship, that college degree would mean they would be a higher income earner, so they have more money to be generous with. If anything, they should have seen it as a long-term investment, but it sounds like they've blown that chance. If you want to have more children, that's fine, that's your right. Just don't expect to be entitled to everyone else's help and money to raise the child. In the cast, EM entitled mother, BK bratty kid, dad, owner, boss, dad, me, have a guess, 11 at the time, E, employee. Well then, my dad owns this carpet shop in our town, pretty popular, humble flex, and I sometimes work there. I've had a few examples of Karens, but none like this. EM walks in flanked by BK. Excuse me, she says looking at me. Yes ma'am, how can I help you? Why are you wearing that? She says pointing at my uniform. Um, it's my uniform. No, why are you wearing it? She says angrily. Oh, sorry, I have to wear it because I work here. No, you don't. Yes, I do, it's policy. No, you don't work here. I'd figured out she was trying to cause trouble and didn't want to fan the flames. Would you like to speak to one of the employees then? EM, very smugly. Yes, go get them now. Okay, I walk towards the desk and open the desk flap. Hey, you can't do that. Me, shocked at her screaming. Sorry, what? You can't go back there. Me, just bored of her. Ma'am, I'm an employee. Would you like me to get someone or not? Fine. I walk back into the office and see that today is what my dad called a trial day, when he brought in lots of people who are trying to be employees, have kind of like a practice day, so I try and find someone who's been here for a while. Hey E, there's a lady outside who needs some help. Oh, let the new guy help her. She seems to be one of those people who are trying to start drama. Oh, one of them. All right, tell her I'll be 10 seconds. Me walking out of the office. He'll be here in 10 seconds, I say. I grab a hoover, vacuum to you Americans, and start hoovering to see BK crawling in the carpet racks, which isn't anything new, it happens all the time. Excuse me, mate, can you not do that? Why not? Because they might rip or get dirty, and you might hurt yourself, BK sulky. Fine. I carry on and not five seconds go by until guess who shows up? Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Were you being mean to my son? No, ma'am. I just told him not to climb in the carpet rack. And what gives you the right to do that? I work here? For the last time, no, you don't. I do. You can go ask E if you want. I say pointing at E, who has just shown up looking for the woman. I won't because I know you don't work here. So if BK can't climb in the carpet, what can he do? I don't know, ma'am. Just let him play on your phone. I left it in the car. Okay, well, BK cutting me off. Mommy, I want to go in there. It says as it points at the door to the warehouse. Okay, you can do that. Sorry, that's employees only. E walks over. Hello, ma'am. Can I help you? He said after all this, he wanted to get EM away from me because he knows I have issues socializing, aka I'm an introvert. EM walks away and talking business, I hope. At this point, my dad has called me and told me to help. I'm in the warehouse. About three minutes go by and who comes waddling in? But good old BK. I was the only one there who wasn't totally busy. So I walk over to him. Sorry, mate. You're not allowed in here. Why? Because it's employees only. Why? Because it's not safe. It was as long as you stay away from the forklifts. But you're in here. Because I've been trained. I hadn't. BK leaves. 50 seconds later, I see EM charging at me, flames in her eyes. What did you say to my son? Me, terrified. I cannot deal with stress well. What? EM, these are her words, not mine. Are you freaking retarded? I said, what did you say to my son? Me, not knowing what was going on and on the edge of tears. Nothing, ma'am. I just told him he can't be in here. Excuse me, ma'am. What's going on here? Your child is being racist. Just like me, both of them are white. Dad, shock. How exactly is he being racist? He won't let my son in here. Dad, annoyed. So because my son won't let you in an employee's only room, he's racist. EM smugly looks at me. Yes. Ma'am, I would like you to leave. So it runs in the family, your son being racist to my son, and you're being racist to me. My dad, bored with them. 
No, you're causing a scene and are lying. What? Let me speak to your manager! Dad gives me a look that pretty much says I've always wanted to do this. Spins around and says, Hello, I'm the manager. Please leave. EM just looks shocked and walks away, mumbling something about racist pigs and people these days. And that was the last we saw of her. Sometimes I wish I could get a job as a manager, just so I could have one of these encounters. But you know what? It honestly wouldn't be worth the pain of all the other encounters in retail having to deal with entitled parents. So in my two previous posts, I've explained that I'm a party host at a trampoline park in the UK. And unfortunately, we deal with Karens 24-7, 365 days a year. With party hosts, you can get given a party and you spend a whole hour doing the activity with the party, then 30 minutes with them in the party room. We are allowed to interact with other children on the outside of the party if it's needed, but our main focus has to be on the party guests. We also allow the parents to tip us if they want to. We don't enforce it or tell them they have to, but sometimes if the party parents want to feel like like the party has gone really well, sometimes they do give you money. The party parents and the kids in the party were great, so there were no issues there. About 15 minutes into the party, a lady came up to me whilst I was having a conversation with the birthday child about what he had gotten for his birthday whilst we're waiting for a trampoline to become free. Now this woman must have been the boss Karen, as in last level beat the boss kind of Karen. Excuse me, can you go and get my son a drink? The cafe is just upstairs. I'm not allowed to leave my party, I'm afraid. What do you mean? You work here. My son wants a drink. Get him one. As I said, if you wish to get yourself or your son a drink, the cafe is upstairs. We don't allow food or drinks around the trampolines. So if you wish to have a drink, you need to go upstairs. No, no, you're missing the point. My son wants a drink. Why won't you get him one? You're giving them to those other kids. They're a part of a party. The parents have paid for me to be with them and give them a party room. We have drinks for the party children in their party room. Non-members of the party must go upstairs for food and drinks. Well, that's ridiculous. And she storms off. I turned to the birthday child and we walked to a different area. My manager came over and pulled me to the side slightly so the child couldn't hear. What was that about? Classic Karen wanted me to get her son a drink. He wasn't in the party and kept saying I had to get her son a drink. Bloody Karens. Okay, no worries. She left and the party continued. It came to five minutes to the end and I gathered the party up and got them to stand in front of our birthday wall. Basically a wall with happy birthday written on it with silhouette stickers of people jumping. So the PM can take a group photo. It's pretty easy to spot the ones in the party because I give them colored bibs to wear. I noticed a little boy sort of edging his way into the photo. He was not wearing a bib. Hey buddy, where's your bib gone? I don't have one. He's not part of the party. Okay, hey buddy, can you just jump out of the photo for me? You've got to be wearing a bib for this photo. Sorry, buddy. Now, it was a little kid, so I was very friendly and nice about it. I didn't shout. I crouched down to his level and spoke to him nicely. He started crying and walked away. I looked at the PM and just shrugged. The whistle blew, signaling that the session was up. I lined the party up and walked them to the party room. We went inside, they all sat down, and I went and got the food for them. I put the pizzas down on the table and the kids started eating. There was a knock on the door. I opened the door and stepped outside to see Karen. Can I help you? Why did you make my son cry? Do you just go about your day annoying everyone? All I did was ask him politely if he could jump out of the photo that my party mum was trying to take of the party members. She didn't want him in the photo as he wasn't a part of the party. I was nice to him, never raised my voice at all. I'm sorry if it made him upset, but unfortunately, it's what the party mum wanted. EM rolls her eyes. Whatever. Can we just have some food then? Cafes upstairs. I smiled. How many times do I have to tell you, Karen? Food's upstairs. My son wants what they're having. Just get him a plate. She tuts. The cafe sells pizza upstairs. Your son is not a member of the party. The party mom has not paid for your son to have party food. If you want the food, you'll have to go upstairs and buy it there. No, just give me a slice of pizza or I'll tell your manager. My manager will just tell you the same thing. That's it. I'm going to the manager. Okay, no worries. She's at reception. 
I smiled and went back to the party room. The party mum pulled me aside. Is everything okay? Yeah, just the lady whose son tried to get into the group photo wanted me to give her a plate of party food as a sorry for making her son upset, which we can't do as he's not a member of the party. She's going to speak to my manager because she didn't like me saying no. Oh, what a horrible woman. No way I would want to give her any food. I paid for it. She didn't. I agreed with her and eventually the kids ate all the food. We sang happy birthday and the kid blew his candles out. I left the party mum in the room to make sure the kids had their shoes on and gave them party bags as I cut the cake up and wrapped them up in the kitchen when my manager came in. The Karen came and complained that she wouldn't give her food. I'm just gonna stand here and pretend to chat to you because she stood watching us. The woman's delusional. I told her the exact same thing. Not in the party, no food. She was convinced that I had to give her party food as a sorry for making her son cry. The party mom even said she wouldn't give them food because she paid for it. My manager laughed. Karen's man. I finished with the cake and took them into the party room and gave them out to all the kids. As the party was leaving the room, the PM at the back checking she had everything. Does my son not get any cake? No, sorry. I only cut enough for the party members. My son wants cake. Sorry, but your son isn't in the party. He's not getting anything. You've not paid for the party, so you aren't getting anything. The EM mumbles. <laughs> Bitch. Okay, ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. You've tried to take food from a party when you've not paid for it. You've been very rude to myself, my manager, and this lady here. So I'd like you to leave. How dare you? I'll be phoning the manager of this building and we'll be getting you fired. The woman who owns this business is a very good friend of mine. You better say goodbye to your job. And she stormed off. I'll be more than happy to leave you a good review. You've been a great party host. I would recommend you a lot. Here, take this. Thank you for being amazing. She handed me a £10 note. Oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. She won't get very far. It's two guys who own this business, so I wish her luck. Have a great day. And again, thank you so much. What a muppet. Have a lovely day, darling. Her and the party left. It was a very weird, but good party. We heard nothing from the Karen or any of the higher ups, so I assume that complaint never happened. The party mum left a lovely review on our website and it felt great walking away with a 10 pound tip after dealing with a Karen. Okay, so this is my question to you. If you got paid 10 pounds after every encounter you had with a Karen, would it be worth it or not? What if that was your only way to make a living? Do you think you could survive? Would there be a worse job? Let me know in the comments below. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.